If you look at job postings these days, you'll definitely come across one of these terms. Agentic software engineer, UI UX. AI UX designer. Agent UX designer. AI agentic product. Product designer, agentic. UX researcher and designer for LLMs and agentic systems. These are all jobs for UI UX designers, but with a new skill set, which is designed for AI agents. And these are the highest paying design jobs right now. After watching this video, you will have a clear path to confidently apply to these jobs. Hi, my name is Jad. Today, I'm going to take you through a detailed example of a real world app where AX design is essential. I will also help you figure out how you can apply it to your own projects. So stay tuned till the end. But first, you must understand the fundamentals of AX Design and where it came from. Let's chop it up in easy terms. First of all, the name AX Design is still not widely adopted and not really defined. In general now, it stands for Agentic Experience Design. But you'll also find in some places that it stands for Adaptive Experience Design. It could also be used as Agent Experience Design. But that term has been used in the past for customer experience where you design the experience of human agents and not AI. So to avoid this confusion, we're calling it agentic experience design. So AX design is clearly on track to be the next phase derived from UX design. And UX design itself was derived from UI design. In the 80s, design started gaining traction with the introduction of computers. It was the age of screens and buttons. Then in the 2000s, we moved into the age of human-centered design, coined as UX design, derived from UI design. And now in the 2020s, we're moving into the age of human plus AI co-agency. Just like UX split from UI, AX is splitting from UX. So now we're designing the experience for humans and AI agents together, or how humans interact with AI agents. Now, technically, I think the new field should be called UI UX AX, but I feel that would be too long of a term to catch on. So we're using AX design to indicate that it includes all three disciplines. We designed the UI, we design the user interaction with the UI, and then we design the user's interaction with AI agents. If you want to seriously get into AX design, I'll show you exactly how to boost your career at the end of the video as well. Now, instead of telling you what the AX design principles are, I'm gonna go through planning a project and I will highlight each principle as we come across it. And that will clarify why we're making certain design decisions. And that's the best way to learn. And at the end, I will give you a full list of AX principles so you can reference it when you're working on your own project. So let's start with an idea. Any app can be agentic. That's the future and that's what users are starting to expect in every app they use. You can clearly feel that if an app is not agentic, it's considered dumb. Users want the app to understand their intent, to perform actions on their behalf. And that's what will make your app smart these days. And at the end of the video, I will show you multiple examples of app ideas and how they can become agentic. Your idea could be one of them. So many things at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around. And don't forget to ask me anything down in the comment section. All questions and feedback are welcome. The idea we're going to go with today is a journaling agent. We're going to go through the AX design phase in this video, how to plan an agentic app and how to apply AX design principles. So to start any idea, you need to identify the problem you are solving for. So for me here, the problem is that many people struggle to maintain consistent journaling habits because it feels time consuming, unstructured and difficult to turn into actionable insights. The solution is to have a journaling app powered by AI agent that turns text or voice input into journal entries, mood logs, and personalized suggestions. It learns from user feedback, tracks patterns, and offers context-aware insights to improve self-reflection. So after I came up with a solution, I wrote a small usage overview that will help guide the AX workflow. My intended usage here is that the user enters text or voice, the agent analyzes intent, and the agent outputs a journal entry or a mood log or answers based on the user's history. And then the user will confirm, edit or discard those suggestions. And upon the user's confirmation, everything will be saved to the database. And the agent will then learn from that user feedback. So just from that idea, I came up with this AX flowchart that illustrates how the agent behaves in conjunction with the user. So you can see this as a user flowchart, but it also includes the agent's behavior. I added a legend here for you to understand this chart. I marked in blue the home page where the user will start. And in green, I marked all of the AX principles that you need to keep in mind. 
That way you can see how AX principles are being applied while planning the app. And then to make it even more clear, I added some examples in purple. This will help anyone looking at this chart to understand the intended usage of this app. So to start, we have this main input field here. This is the main field in the whole app. This will take text or voice. So here you start a journal entry or you ask about your history. So no matter what you enter or speak here, the AI agent will identify what your intent is. And that's the first AX principle, intent recognition. The agent has to understand what the human needs. So the user enters text, and then we have an AI agent here that will understand what this person is looking for. And I added some limitations and framework here for the AI to work with. I'm asking the AI here to grab all of this input data and figure out if there's a journal entry, if there's a mood log, or if it needs to answer a question based on the user's history. And it can be any of these two or a combination of all of them. And below that, I added an example that illustrates a prompt that includes all three of these outputs. The example here is, if a person said, just got back home, feeling tired, what should I do now? This example here has a journal entry because it knows that the person got back home from work. That means they can enter that in the journal. And then it has a mood log because the user expressed how they're feeling. So this will be added to their mood. And then what should I do now? The agent will retrieve all of the history from this user and suggest what to do next based on their patterns. So then we proceed to the next step. And this is the essential step in the app where we include the user or the human in the loop. And this will have a dynamic UI based on what the agent output in this uh, AI agent step. So the dynamic UI here will adapt if the agent is outputting all three of these types of outputs here, the UI will adapt to display three different types of output. One of them is a journal entry, one of them is a mood log, and one of them is a response to the user's input. And here you must give the ability to the user to edit or confirm or discard all of these suggestions, because it's always essential to keep the user in control. So in this example here, when you continue from the first input that we have, it will pick up that there's a workday complete journal entry, it will pick up that there's a mood log, and then it will suggest the answer Based on your history, you might want to wind down with a game of Call of Duty. At this point, after the user edits or confirms, they click save and all of this will get saved to the database. Here I have the example if they accepted everything or an example if the user made some edits. So here we can see, for example, the user said, no, I'm actually relieved, I'm not tired. So they changed their mood log and now the AI can learn from this change. So maybe the next time this person goes back home from work, the agent here will recognize that this person is relieved. And now the agent also knows that this person likes to read a book. So you can see how all of this will feed back into the system, making it smarter. So that's the feedback and learning AX principle applied to this application. Now going back to the beginning, we completed the flow of the main input field. Now below that, I want to have a highlight section and this builds transparency with the user. And that's another AX principle. The highlight section should visualize your progress and achievement. So this will surface everything that is happening in the database and the agent will give you patterns and mood tracking and recent wins for motivation and stuff like that. That way the user will have a clear idea on what's in the database and what the system knows about this person. So that builds trust and transparency. And then below the highlight section, I'm gonna have a suggestions maybe above the highlight section, I'm not sure, but the suggestions would be based on the history and date and time. It can suggest new entries or new actions or a mood selection. And that would be another AX principle, which is context awareness. The agent should be aware of the environment and based on that, it will perform actions. The environment here is date and time. Say for example, on a weekday at 8 a.m., it will know that I'm going to work. If it's a weekend at 9 p.m., I might know that I'm going out with my friends. So that contextual awareness will help the agent be more accurate and more helpful. Now to build the UI design for this app, I'm gonna go to UX Pilot where we can give it all of this information to build a dynamic UI. First of all, I'm gonna have a little chat with ChatGPT to analyze this idea and give me a sitemap and a description of the contents that I need to have in each page. That way I can give a very detailed prompt to UX Pilot. So I asked ChatGPT here, I attached the flowchart and I said, give me a sitemap for this app to design the UI screens. And I want the content description for each page from top to bottom. I want to see building blocks and components for mobile app. 
So it gave me the sitemap here of everything that is needed for this app. And then it broke it down in terms of the content of each screen. So in your Xpilot, I'm going to create a new project. I'll call it journaling agent. And here I'm going to enter some styling that I want. And now I'll go to my project description here that I have. I'll add this so that your Xpilot understands the whole context of the app. And then I will add multiple screens here based on what ChatGPT gave us. So I'm going to skip the onboarding here. Let's go to the home screen. That would be one. Okay, I added the four main screens here. I don't need the rest. I'm going to keep it on Hi-Fi Design and I'll click Max and Deep Design to get the best possible UI output with the UX Palette AI. And one important thing here, I'm creating a mobile app, so I'll make sure to select a mobile app here. And there we go. We have our four pages. They look beautiful. And UX Palette here took some liberty to add extra quality of life features. And that's really cool because I added deep design here. But if you just want to design the exact requirements that you have, you can turn off deep design. But this always happens when I reach the phase of design with UX Pilot. It gives me more ideas to include in my app. But the core process remains the same. It's just surfacing more data and more options to the user here. So here in the home page, we have the main input field. We have the record or photo option. We can remove the photo option because we don't have that in the plan. And then we have recent reflections and the mood tracker and achievements, just like we had in the requirements and some AI insights and tracking for days of the week. And you can see the trends here and some quick actions. It's really cool to design with the Xpilot because uh, it really brings your idea to life very quickly. So when we have a new entry here, the AI agent will come up with insights and mood analysis and suggestions. And here you can review or edit or discard. And then finally, we have the mood tracker page and all of the entries. You can have some statistics, which is nice to see, and your recent entries. Beautiful UI. To learn how to build the UI with N810 automations, check out my previous video where I went through the whole process of building AI agents with N810. Now here's the full list of the AX design principles that we went through this video, if you want to take a screenshot. And now that you completely understand the core AX principles, let's see how you can convert regular apps to become agentic. Travel planner, for example, a user enters a destination and dates. The AX flow will autofill the suggestions, smart groupings of activities, contextual nudges, adaptive experiences across planning, booking, and reminders. Another example is a fitness tracker. Here you can focus on goal-driven prompts instead of logging. So the AX flow will be something like daily nudges to adapt to progress, recovery suggestions, motivational framing, adaptive content personalization. Another idea is a budget and spending coach. The user connects expenses and the agentic flow would be the app interpreting the patterns and reframing advice based on context like end of month versus start, essential versus luxury. It would have an adaptive tone and interaction. Another idea is food and nutrition assistant. You can scan your fridge or upload groceries and the agent will suggest meals adapting to dietary restrictions and time of day and available ingredients. This is a good example of contextual adaptation. Another app could be a learning companion, something that provides short daily lessons on a topic. The agent could adapt to difficulty based on previous answers. It could adjust motivational style, like competitive versus supportive. This would be a good demonstration of adaptive learning design. And say, for example, a simple to-do list app. How can it be agentic? In this example, the agent could take action to remind you to prepare for a trip, for example or auto split subtasks and priorities. In this one, the agent will, will understand intent and will detect goals behind a vague task and will also adapt by recognizing tasks dynamically. So with these new roles surfacing like agentic UX designer or AI interaction designer or adaptive systems designer or simply AX designer, 
employers are now seeking designers fluent in AI workflows. They're also seeking the ability to test agent reliability and usability, and they want skills in orchestrating adaptive interfaces. Just as companies started to hire their first UX designers in the 2000s, now they are starting to look for AX designers. So make sure you nail down all of those skills that I mentioned, and with practice, you can then put them in your CV and showcase them in your portfolio. Start by planning a simple agentic app, build the flow, and then build the automations and then generate the UI for it, you will have your first agentic app. AX is now the future-proof skill for designers. And your homework for today is to start small, create an AX flowchart, experiment with automations using tools like N8N, Zapier, or Make. Check out my previous video where I show you the full process of N8N and dynamic UIs. And if you want to stay ahead of the agentic shift, I'm creating extensive guides in the AI Tooltip community. I'll personally help you get started with any project that you have. Cheers.